we're not on winning. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people think, think that's all I do, but no, I, I, there are other aspects to my life. And today's an important one, and it is mental health. Because tomorrow, 4th of February, is Time to Talk Day. Time to Talk Day is basically the day when we're all encouraged to talk about, well, to talk in general, but to talk about our mental health, how it affects us, to check in on other people, to make sure that everyone's okay, especially at the moment with lockdown and stuff. Just send a text, make a phone call, just check in on people and don't accept I'm fine as an answer. Make sure that they actually, they actually are fine because I think pretty much everyone's struggling at the moment. This has been hard for most people. But anyway, back on topic. What's well, supposed to start with anyway? Time to talk to is tomorrow. And it's important. <laughs> Talking about mental health is very important. And here is part of why. There is still a stigma. There are still misconceptions. There are still myths. It's still in part a taboo topic. And I suppose a lot of people are just thinking, so? Doesn't matter, does it? But it does. It is a terrifying feeling opening up about your mental health because you don't know how people are going to react. You don't know what misconceptions they already have in their head. You don't know if they happened to see a film last night where someone with your same diagnosis killed a lot of people. <laughs> it might not be an extreme example, but I've I've actually had that one happen. But um, anyway, and the problem is that not only are you scared to talk to people, but you come scared to seek treatment. You, you decide that, well, you decide you've been pathetic. You decide that you need to man up, as it were. And that's not true. The human brain is an amazing, absolutely amazing thing. But it's also kind of stupid. It, it does things that don't make sense. And we've also got to remember, it, it didn't evolve for that world that we have right now. Evolution has not caught up with all the ridiculous things that we've invented. Humans are fantastic creatures, but we've outpaced evolution. Our brain is still pretty much set up for, well, when we could be eaten by a tiger. <laughs> and unfortunately, in some situations, our brain isn't quite clever enough to work out the difference between a threat of the tiger eating us and the threat of our boss getting annoyed with us. So it will overreact. And that's when it's acting normally. Now, I don't want to say normally, but you know what I mean. It's when it's acting like the brain should act. Sometimes things go wrong in the brain as well. <laughs> Neurotransmitters get overmade or undermade or just don't function the way they should do. Sometimes physical connections are different to what they should be. Yeah, I did neurology at university. <laughs> I, will get, I will get off the brain now. Because the point is, it's not all about the brain. You can't just go for a scan and suddenly realise that you've got X, Y or Z. Mental health is a lot more complicated than that. But the point I'm making is, it's human and it's normal to struggle. And we shouldn't feel bad for that. We shouldn't feel like less of a person. We shouldn't feel less worth. We shouldn't feel that we can't or shouldn't ask for help. We shouldn't feel like we're just a burden on society. Just for struggling, essentially. Which, as I just said, as I've just pointed out, it's normal, especially at the moment, especially since COVID happened. Everything's gone topsy-turvy and we just don't know how to cope. And that's fine. It is perfectly okay to not be okay. It's perfectly fine to struggle. It's perfectly fine to not be able to function properly. It's all t it's all fine. I just want to put that, like, put that out right now. It's fine. It's perfectly normal. It's perfectly acceptable. Do not feel like you're strange or like you're broken. You're just being human. And that's why we need to be able to talk about this stuff. It shouldn't be taboo. The more we talk about it, the more misconceptions we break, the more we talk about it, the more people feel able to go for and seek help. The more we talk about it, the more people feel able to reach out. And the more we talk about it, the more people realise they're not alone. Mental health is, issues are surprisingly common. 
most statistics I found recently have, have stated between 22 and 26 percent of people have a diagnosable mental health issue and that is just counting the people who've actually been to a doctor and got diagnosed when you're counting all the people who don't have the ability to see a doctor or don't feel like they're bad enough the percentages go be even higher now obviously we don't know what the percentage is because those people can't be counted but the point is it's, it's surprisingly common and you will be amazed when you start talking about it just how many people you know who are affected just how many people can relate to things that you've felt just how many people are on some form of medication or in some form of therapy the numbers are fast and we hide it and the more we hide it the better we get at hiding it and the more isolated we become and that's that's not right we should be able to speak about it we should be able to be open about it we should be able to tell someone just speak to a friend or a family member and say yeah i'm, I'm finding it difficult today we should be able to ring into work ring in sick and you say that it's a cause of mental health not have to make up an excuse and on top of on that we should be able to go into work without feeling that we might end up losing our job if people find out about our condition we should be able to think that friends can find out about it without them ghosting us or just just be able to live a normal life maybe with a couple of adjustments in some cases but we're just people basically i think is what i'm saying we're not some sort of unknown strange concept we are just people who have been hiding a lot of stuff and we shouldn't have to we should be able to say to people yeah i'm finding it difficult to do or yeah i'm diagnosed with x or i'm on y medication or or how about this one? Oh yeah i can't drink because my because i'm on an antidepressant that's hard to say a lot of people i know who are on something that means that they can't drink and they find it impossible to admit that that's the reason they can't drink so they make up excuses or make it or the work thing ring in and say oh yeah well, i've um, got a bad stomach when in reality they're having a depressive episode or oh, i've got a migraine when in reality they've been having anxiety attacks all night and haven't been able to sleep the point is we should be able to be open about this we should be able to speak about it. not just tomorrow either but always mental health is complicated and it is difficult to understand i, I get that i fully get that and it's very difficult to talk about it makes you feel extremely awkward and extremely vulnerable fully understand fully get that but the more we talk about it the easier it will get the more we talk about it the more people potentially could be helped the more we talk about it the more people will start to understand and even even understand ourselves when when i first started when I first started having symptoms, I didn't know I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea. No one had ever really spoken to me about mental health. I had a very vague idea that it existed, but I didn't know anything about it. First time I went to a doctor, I I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening. First time I had a panic attack, I genuinely thought I was having a heart attack. Genuinely, that's the first thing in my head. Not just oh, I'm having a panic attack. No, heart attack. That was terrifying. Not, it doesn't exactly make the panic attack any better. <laughs> but if I'd had some sort of prior knowledge of how mental health works, maybe I'd have found it a little bit easier to adapt, is what I'm saying, I guess. Maybe I'd have felt like less of a freak. Maybe I'd have felt less like an outcast and less like I... Well, less like I had to hide. And it's not a nice feeling, Hayley, like you have to hide, especially when some mental health issues make you withdraw to start with anyway. So basically what I'm saying is, I know it's scary, I know it's difficult, I know it makes you feel awkward. But try to be open tomorrow, even if it's just a hashtag on Twitter or something. You don't know who that small, small ripple might get to. That small ripple might make someone else post, and someone else, and someone else, and create a tidal wave in the end. No matter how small you feel your your part to play in this is, do it anyway. You have no idea what effect it could have on someone and how much it could possibly help someone. It could even help yourself. Because being able to talk about this stuff, it is... Although it is difficult at the time, it does feel 
like some sort of relief afterwards. And you'll be amazed how many people will understand and will be able to relate.